what is up guys so today is Halloween and I will show you how to make this mask from scratch stick around see you later all right guys so the first thing we're gonna do is um, import the evil skull mask with no supports by kin cam um, it's thing, thing number 2593058 on Thingiverse. Now what we can see right now is that the mask is pretty big actually. So this is the size of my print bed and what we're going to need to do is bring it down to a size that is also going to fit my face. So luckily I have a face, well head scan that I did in the local makerspace and we're going to use that to figure out the scale of the piece. All right, so what we're gonna do right now is we're going to transform the um, mask and the and the and and the head model. And what you do is you either go to Edit Transform or you can just hit T on your keyboard. So we're rotating rotating the skull, and then we're gonna rotate the mask um, to make sure that they line up correctly. Okay, so now that it is all lined up, we have to scale it. I, in my case, I scaled it to 90% of the size. And after that, you have to align it, make sure that it fits in the print bed. And now we're gonna cut it. We're gonna cut it in a place where we can make sure that we can align it easily again and that the printer's gonna have an easy time printing both the bottom and the top parts. So that's gonna be around the lower part of the frontal bone here. And that's it for the modeling. Now we go ahead and print the piece. Alright guys, so this is it. Here's the, um, well, what was left of the mask. Um, we can see that the top of the mask came out pretty well. I mean, this, um, this section is a little rough, but that's to be expected because of the severe overhangs. Um, over here, it looks like we had a layer shift during the print. Um, I think this is because there was a, a knot in the in the spool, kind of tugged it. Um, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the motor skipped a step. I can't really tell. Um, it, it also seems like that caused this to fall down. Well, actually, this happens before because you can see it's in a lower layer. Anyway, um, there's a lot of. Um, roughness in the undersides I decided not to do any support because I would take a lot of material and um, I'm going to finish it paint it anyway so um, maybe I could get away with it so what we're going to do now is basically clean everything up smooth it out and um, prepare it for finishing and then and then we're going to attach this to the top and, and then we'll go to the next stage Okay, now that our pieces are ready, we're going to solve and weld them together using welding number 4 acrylic cement and this little applicator. So first things first, we need to make sure that we can hold the both pieces together stably so that we can glue them with no problem. Then we're going to apply some of the welding number 4 on top of the surfaces since it's a very thick wall and capillary action is not going to be enough to have enough contact. Now we place it together and hold it for around a minute. That'll be strong enough to manipulate it, but not enough to cure it. 
flip it around and apply some of the um, well done to the edges and let the capillary effect seep into the seam. This is how you normally use um, acrylic cement. Um, let it sit for a few hours so it can gain all the strength. All right, guys, so now that it's all sanded out and all the edges are taken away, we're going to go even further than that using Bondo Automotive Filler. And it comes in a can like that, and you're going to need something to mix, and you're also going to use the hardener. First, you start with mixing everything, you know, make sure it's even. And then you're going to want to make sure that you mix the hardener very well and apply a small amount of hardener. Don't use too much, mix very well, and then you can apply it to the gaps. It's kind of sticky, so your fingers might work, but I didn't have a good time with it. All right, and this is how it looks like after sanding the dried Bondo. It's pretty smooth, and it looks like it filled up the gaps from the C-shift pretty well, pretty decently. I didn't focus too much on the back because the Bondo was drying up fairly quickly and it's kind of a mess to mix a new batch. So now what we're going to do is prime it with filling primer. Alright, so here it is with the primer. Um, it's looking pretty good. Um, I should have done some Bondo for this, but it's on the inside so I didn't really care too much for that. Um, this was mostly just for comfort when it's against my face. Um, the front is looking pretty good. Um, the filler primer does fill up some of the layer lines, but it's not really that much. And um, the Bondo filling here doesn't look too bad. Um, I think it kind of gives it kind of like a damaged old look or whatever, which is kind of what I'm going for, I guess. Um, should have filled this up, but All right now, uh, let's do the painting. I'm going to do try to do white on the teeth and then the rest is going to be red because that's just the paint I have and, you know, it kind of would look cool. All right, so now we have a good layer of white. It's time to mask it. Here it is, the teeth are masked. So now we can go ahead and paint it red. All right, so this is how it looks in red. It's pretty neat. Let's uh, unmask it. All right. Now we'll have to weather it and put a little depth to it with some black paint. All right, so let's do the wash. Um, I'm going to use some acrylic paint and water since I don't have a lot of experience with this or painting for that matter. Um, I have some paper towels just in case we need to dry some excess and some Q-tips uh, in case we need to get into the fine details. I have two brushes, one's a little bigger than the other, and water. Okay, so uh, what, from what I've read, there's a lot of estimates between like 95, 5 to 95% um, water paint, or like 1 to 10. So I'm going to start with just a drop. Alright, now what we're going to do 
is we're going to add a strap so that we can attach it to our heads. So. Okay. Make the cut. And there's a little bit of fuzz there that we're going to take care of. All right, so I measured it out and it's gonna be around this, around this much maybe. But before we do that, I bought, I bought this. I saw it in the store, it's a bunch of feathers. Um, but I think they could turn out pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of give it that, uh, I don't know, voodoo look or something like that with some feathers. I think it'd be kind of cool. So let's add these. All right, so I have all the feathers now. And um, they came tied into like some sort of rope or string or whatever. So I'm going to try to hot glue that into place. Like this. All right, here's the mask. Looks pretty cool. So I think that um, I'm going to use this um, scratch piece of fleece. And I'm going to make strips like that to make sure that the um, feathers point in the right direction and also protect them, um, me from the ends of the feathers. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, it is time to put the strap on. Um, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna place it here first, and then I'm gonna use this E6000 glue, which is supposed to be really good and flexible and um, suited for fabric and plastic and all that stuff. So hopefully that's good. But it takes 24 hours to cure, and I need this before that. On top of that, just in case the glue doesn't work, um, I'm going to try to staple it. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, I measured the depth of the staple with the thickness of the mask, and supposedly we should be clearing it with at least like a millimeter. And also, now that we have added all of this, then hopefully that'll help. So now I'm going to remove this. This is like a little tab that I, that I added so that I could hold the mask while I painted. So that's exposing some of the primer. But that's cool. Maybe I'll sign it there. is the final the final product it looks pretty damn mean <laughs> pretty good look at the look at the feathers I really enjoyed it you know you gotta sign it but 
This actually feel, feels pretty well, pretty good. Um, there you go. Let's put it on. And there it is. I think it fits pretty perfectly. You know, it's got that, that effect, you know. What do you guys think? Is it scary? Is it Halloween-y? Thumbs up if you like it. Stick around because we're going to have a lot more cool videos coming around. See you later. Don't forget to check the description below for important links and details. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe. I have plenty of footage of all the projects that I've been doing lately and I finally have the computer to edit all the videos. I also have a lot of cool ideas to come. If you think I've earned it, you can let the ad play at the end of the video to help support my channel. See you next time, guys.